Okay, so for this one, we're always going to have to use this method and this specific back right and of those first two lines only if they say using factor theorem or show that x minus one is a factor. Okay, so the, the question has to be written in a specific way. So let's add that to the side. I'm going to make a bracket here next to these first two lines. Only if question states okay, there are two ways in which they can say it. Using factor theorem or the factor theorem, you get the idea. Using factor theorem. I've written it next to the first two lines of the question or the answer. So only if the question states using factor theorem or so that whatever. So I'm going to put a dot 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 because it will be a different bracket depending on the question. Is a factor. That's it. They ask you that. They give you the equation and they say show that x minus one is a factor, then you're going to have to do those first two lines. Okay, so I remember when we're solving for x, finding an x value that makes this equation true. And what is this equation equal to? Zero, right? So we need to find an x value that makes this equation equal to zero, right? So that is what we're doing. We are just going through the different numbers that we can work with. And I think in the video, I said I only start with one, then I do negative one, then two, negative two, three, negative three. But if you have gone up to like five or six and you still haven't found something that works, then you may start looking at fractions. All right, so like a half, negative a half, we will look at that with now. But you are subbing in. So this is like a trial and error type thing. Okay, you're subbing in. Different x values until you get one that makes the equation true, that makes the equation equal to zero. That value, the value that you get from that, so now this is saying that x must be equal to one, right? Do we agree with that? f of x, f of one, this is saying that x equals one. That is a solution. But what bracket will give me an answer of x equals one? x minus one, right? We remember when we did something like this, I'm just going to write a little example here at the bottom. When we did, you don't have to copy this down, but say it was x squared um, plus 5x minus 4 equal to 0. Right, and you have to solve for x, yes? And um, yeah. If you had to solve for x here, you would factorize, right? What would my brackets be? x times the 4, the difference must be, oh, no, right. Let's do this. Sorry. Back to the floor, the sun is back to the negative five. What do we think? Minus four, minus, four. minus four and minus one. Which x values am I going to get from those two brackets? Four and one. Right? So that's what I'm talking about, guys. When I say now, when we working in this example at the top, we actually have the x value. We need to work backwards into getting the bracket. Okay, so you're getting the x value of one. What bracket will give you an x value of one? X minus one. All right, there's always a different sign. So you just tell me one of your x okay. Yeah, but you're gonna, possibly going to sub in a whole bunch until you find one that actually works. Okay, it's not always going to be the first one. And what are you trying to find? I'm trying to solve for x. I'm trying to find a value that makes this equation true. Once I've found one value that works, that's going to give me one bracket in the factorized form. So we're getting our first bracket from that trial and error thing. 
So if you get your first bracket, you always do prime over it. Prime over So I begin just in eight values until you find one that works. And when you find one, that makes it equal to zero. That is then your first bracket. Then you use your first bracket to get your second bracket. So you're going to say, what must I multiply x by to get x cubed? x squared, hey? If we're looking at our last term, what if I multiply negative one by to get positive one? Negative one, right? Negative one times negative one is positive one. For the middle term, maybe let me just move this one line down to that. that. For this middle term, we need a 2x squared. Okay, so that is what I need in my middle term. What do I get when I multiply those together? Do we agree that it's negative? x squared. What do I need? Positive 2x squared. What does I add to negative 1x squared to get positive 2x squared? 3x squared, right? Now that is why I made that a 3x, so that when I multiply these two, I'm going to get my plus 3x squared. I'm going to pack with a whole bunch of these. I'm going to do another example now. I'm just going to repeat that whole process, guys. Right? You get your first bracket by trial and error. Okay, by subbing different equations until you find one that makes the equation true, that makes it equal to zero. Then you figure out if your x value is one, your bracket has to be x minus one. Okay, it's always a different sign. All right, then that is your first bracket. You now need to see what did you multiply your first bracket by to get the second bracket. So x multiplied by x squared is going to give you x cubed. So you look at your first. The product of your first must give you your first term there. You look at your last. The product of your last must give you that last term there. So negative one times negative one is going to give you plus one. Then for your middle term, you look at your inners, right? If you want to call it that, if you can use that foil. Negative one times x squared is negative x squared. We need positive 2x squared. So that means that I need another 3x squared. Okay, the only way to get that is if I have a plus 3x there, because x times 3x is 3x squared. Okay, it is going to take some practice, guys. So don't worry if you're sort of confused. You're just going to have to practice this. Now, remember, we're supposed to be solving for x. So your first x value is x equals 1. Okay, we're getting that from that bracket. Now, guys, can I factorize the second prime or not the second prime? I know the prime only. Are these factors of one the difference between them? Well, I think it is three. No. Okay, so that means that we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so you have some right in the somewhere. So you start it in and you work out what the two is going to Okay, we're going to do another example now from scratch. So does anyone know if anyone has any questions at this point on this example? Let's see another one. Let me just see if I can find one that goes out. Let's see. Um, let's do an example of this useful. Okay, you can just make a heading example or something like that. I'm not sure how you just are uh, set up at the moment. Or well, we did do examples here and then we just did one. So maybe you can say examples continue or more examples. Okay, I'm going to number it one because it's just
the media calculators if you get those out if you are doing it. Okay, so it's not quite coming in one, all right? So I'll just show you on my calculator how I do that. I will say one cube. You can also work it out in your head, right? But it is nice to have it typed out in case you have to go to bigger numbers. Then you can just use the arrow to change the x value, right? So one cube plus a times one squared plus seventeen times one plus ten. Does that work? Thirty-six. No. So I'm not going to write that down. Okay, you don't write down the one that doesn't work. You only write down the one that works. Let's change all our ones to negative one. All right, so see that one thing. It helps if you type it out once and you can just change the value each time. So you might have had to do this a bunch of times. All right, and there we see, oh, there we go, zero. Okay, yes. Yeah, it won't always work. See, if you group these, like you're not going to get the same one. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to write that. Which one works? It was f of negative one. So that, like I said, you don't write on the ones that don't work. You only write on the one that does. So you have to, unfortunately, show that whole substitution line, which is a bit of a slip. But you get a mark for that. Okay, so you write it for negative one and that whole thing equal to zero. Therefore, now guys, if my x value is negative one, the bracket is going to be x plus one. Because if I make x plus one equal to zero, I'm going to get x equal to negative one from that bracket. Okay, so therefore x plus one is a factor. Oh, it should be negative one. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so that's the fact of zero and one done. That's if they didn't say you for the fact of zero, they just say solve for x. We don't have to write this. Okay, you can just go straight into doing your two brackets. Six. All right, are we going to that six, right? That's just the problem here, right? Okay, then we're going to say f of x equals, I'm actually just going to rewrite this whole equation for you just so that we can look at it as we are finding our second bracket. What? Hmm? 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 Figure out what we must multiply x plus one by to get that cubic expression. So what does that multiply x by to get x cubed? X squared. Now you can do your last term already, but you might find your space a bit off. So let's do our middle term so long. All right. So it's not really that difficult once you get the answer, right? What am I going to get as my product here? X squared. Hey, positive x squared. What do I need? Positive eight x squared. So what is my middle term going to be? What does I add to x squared to get eight x squared? Seven x squared. So I'm going to write plus seven x. Because when I do this product here, I'm going to get my plus seven x squared. And that's really all we're doing, right? What's my last term going to be? What does I multiply one by to get 10? 10. 
Um, so I was thinking, you know, I was trying to work out like, what can you do if you were given or something like this and it didn't work? You couldn't make another binomial with it. Should there be any method you could follow? So if that happens, then no. Okay, are we done typewriting, guys? Is that pretty typewriting? No. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. It's not. Okay, we need to remember to solve it. So we need either three brackets or we're going to have to use the quadratic formula for this. Guys, I want to just throw that finding away just because of the quadratic formula. Often, if it's an easy binomial like this, it's quicker to type that than to use the quadratic formula. Right? So here, I'm going to just rewrite my x plus one. For the next one, we need factor the same to start up with seven. Five and two, okay? So x plus five, x plus two, equal to zero. Okay, three factors. Almost done. We now need to list out the x value. So therefore, x equals negative one or negative five or negative two. And that's the answer. Okay, I'm going to do one more example where they're asking it in a different way. Um, let me just see this. You have to say x plus one is zero, and then and then not Okay, number two. <laughs> okay, let me just get my space in here. Okay, number two. Prove that um, if x is equal to six x cubed plus eleven x squared minus four x minus four. No, not necessarily. As long as it's an, as long as it has a degree of three, then we just point it. Highest highest is one of the things. Three of three. Five of ten. But then we didn't work out for seven and ten. So five times we have worked out for seven and ten. No, if they five terms, then it can't be a two bit place. It can't be the five. This is the method for two bit place. So it's not a key that's played in the morning. But I've noticed that they have a few integration now, they're not asking to solve for x, they're just asking us to factorize the function. But it is a pure function, pure expression, so we're going to use the, the exact same thing. Right, even though it's not equal to zero, we still use the same thing. They have given us the factor in this case. Are we understanding this language? Prove that this function is divisible by 2x plus 1. If something is divisible by a number or by a term, an expression, then this thing is a factor, right? If you're saying that 72 is divisible by 9, that means that 9 is a factor of 72. Okay, so they use different language here, guys, but basically what they're asking us is to prove that 2x plus 1 is a factor. I'm not telling us which x value to plug in, though. We need to figure out if this is my factor, 
If this is one of the brackets, what x value will actually give me that bracket? Or which x value will I get from that bracket? How can we work that out? What do you guys think? Yes, you can go. Yes. All right, guys. Remember that it's faster if we go back up to this one over here. We said that x plus one is a factor because x is negative one was equal to zero. Now, if we make x plus one that bracket equal to zero, that is how we get that x value, right? So, if they've now given you the factor that you need to work with, the factor that you need to prove. If they're giving you the factor that you have to prove, you're going to have to make that factor equal to zero to get the x one. So that is just something new. So I'm going to write that down here. If put it in brackets now, two x plus one is a factor. Then we're going to have to make it equal to zero in order to get the x value that will give us that factor, or the x value that we'll get from that factor, from that bracket. So I'm going to have to move that one over to the other side, and it's going to become negative one. Do you agree? And then I'm going to have to divide by two. So the x value that will give me a bracket of two x plus one. Actually, negative of a half. Now, you have situations like not like this because what you have done by no units, right? Where one or two of your brackets has like a coefficient in front of the x, where you have like a two x plus one as one of your brackets, and then you have to make that equal to zero in order to get your x. Out. Okay, so we do the same thing the question is just often. Again, just in case sometimes you get used to it, right? You think that's right? Yeah, so x equals negative one half. So we need to still show this, right? We figured out now that 2x plus 1 will get us the x value negative one half. How am I going to prove that it's a factor? What do I have to do? What tells me that it's going to be a factor? Huh? Yes, thank you. So I'm going to take my function, right? I'm going to put negative one half in the place of x, make all my x is equal to negative one half, and it should be equal to zero. That is what we did in the previous question in order to get the factor, right? We did try and error until we found one that made it equal to zero. They're not telling us which one is going to work, but they're saying so that it works. Okay, so we just need to go through the motion and we need to do that proof. So we're going to say x of negative one half equal to another one x that equation. So we have six times negative one half cubed. Plus 11 times negative of half squared minus, minus, minus 4 times negative of half and then minus 4 again. Okay, so that is a function that they gave us, the actual expression that we have to factorize. But now I'm telling you negative of half to show that the graph that gives the negative of half is a factor. You can obviously just type that into your calculator. You're more than welcome to work that out in your head if you want to, but I think it will be a waste of time. All right, it should give you zero. You can change it to one, two. But it will. You don't have to. If I work for it. So, therefore, 2x plus 1 is a factor. No, we've got the one half of the question now. Hey, we proved that it's a factor now. We got some facts right. Okay, so let's just rewrite that function again. So it was f of x equal to 6x cubed plus 11x squared minus 4x minus 4. And now we know that our first bracket is 2x plus 1. That's part of the Even if you forgot how to prove it, right? So you couldn't remember, oh, I don't know how to prove it. They still have told you that 2x plus 1 is a factor. 
So when you now start writing, you can still use two x plus one as your first bracket. Okay, that's information that I actually gave in the question. Even if you couldn't prove it, you can still use it because they told you that it's a factor. Right, so now this one is a bit more complicated because now our first term is a 2x, not just an x. All right, so we're going to have to see how that works. When we have our first bracket, we use that to get the second bracket. So what if I multiply 2x by to get 6x cubed? 3x squared, well done. Let's look at our middle term, guys. We're going to do it in purple again because it's again going to be a little bit more complicated now. 1 times 3x squared is positive 3x squared. What do I need? Positive 11x squared. But, yes, so I need a positive 8x squared, right? Are we fine with that? I have 3x squared, I need a positive 8x squared. So I need to put something here that when I multiply by 2x, will give me 8x squared. 4x. To be aware of that, guys, you need to actually check that this product is going to give you what you are looking for. All right, you can't just automatically put an 8x in. All right, because if you multiply 2x by 8x, it's going to give you 16x squared, which is not going to give you the same x squared when you add it to 3. Okay, so this is a tricky one because we have 2 x in. All right, our last two is enough. What if I multiply one by two? Is it a four? Is it a four? Please note that I'm not making it equal to zero, guys. No way in the question do they say equal to zero. So we can't just make it equal to zero because we are used to it. So just be aware of what, what are they asking. Are they saying salt for x or are they saying fat price? Okay, different things. Now we need to factorize this binomial if we can. Mm -hmm. uh, See if you can do that one on your own, please. That is a more complicated polynomial. It has an a value of three. Remember, I think it was maybe the first or second time that I saw you guys this year. You guys just did a fine picture. That a fine time. <laughs> then I showed you a very large like cross multiplication method that the majority of you didn't like. You don't use it, so you can try and do that fine picture. <laughs> Hey, do we have an answer to you guys? Taking a break. Okay, are we fine with that, guys? Do they ask us to solve weights? No, there's a question that's not equal to anything you can't solve weights. All right, that is the final answer. Is this answer to that, guys? All right, any other questions on this, guys? You're going to practice it. 
Or apples, if a tree, a apple, and a, and a bunch. <laughs> so that you can get used to this. Okay, this is just a very specific project which you don't need to practice in all of your So we can't roll with it. I'm not going to give you questions from the AP paper because we have like my complex rooms and funny stuff. I don't want to focus on that now. We'll get to that enough tomorrow. So I am going to give you questions from the matric book, like I said. So I will actually just post the picture of this on the bathroom, but I'm going to put it on the board now and you can take a look. And then I'll also just on the board just circle the ones that I want you to do. So you can write exercise 7.5 if you want. Um, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so these ones are not going to all in their own space, but just note that they solve the equation. All right, so these ones are equal to zero. So once you have found, you are going to get your answer. Okay, you just need to be careful what they actually ask of you. Okay, so did we just do this one? No. Have we done this one before? Excuse me. No, this is a bit different. Okay, so you're going to do 1A. Yeah, if you're getting three values, you could essentially get yes, any one of those. Yeah. Okay, you're going to do A, you're going to do B. Guys, please notice that in B, you're going to have to do this thing over the other side. All right, so this is just my quadratic equation. I always get everything on the one side equal to zero and then pass right. Okay, so just be aware of that. For C, I could just divide it through by negative one in the beginning, right? So I want to work with a negative two x cubed, just divide through by negative one right from the start so that you actually have two x cubed plus seven x squared plus two x plus three, sorry, like all screen equal zero, right? Just divide every term by negative one and then it's much easier to work with. That's all that one. <clears throat> No, it's just more practice of this, this thing that we've done so far. All right, there's it. There's H as well, so you're doing those five. <clears throat> and you need to find your first bracket in all of these, in all five of these. You're going to have to do that trial and error thing. Yes? No, you don't have a book. Okay, guys, I'm just going to take a picture of it and post it to Google Classroom quickly so it can work from there as well. I don't know, maybe you can't read that nicely from the board. I just say it's up for I'm thinking of C and F. I have to. I don't know if it is the case, I have to do that myself, but sometimes, like, if I find a two or a three within the cost of ice sometimes you're going to have to look for factors, uh, fractions. So, so maybe try a half, negative a half. I don't know if you will have to do my half, but just in case, if nothing else works, 
Like if you try it and you try it, but if nothing works, then you have to try it. Back. Okay, I've posted it. Guys, I'm going to hand up your tests now. I'm going to have to take them back because I haven't put the marks in yet. And then, no, we'll see. If you have any like burning issues now, we're going to ask you about your own work. But the reason I'm wrong, I'm going to go through it as well. I'm going to go through it as well. Maybe you can find it mild. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I just use Oh, sorry. 